Good morning. It's so good to see you all here today. You're very, very welcome. And all of you who join us online, we're so glad you're here too. Whether you've crossed time zones or the street to get to us this morning, we're so glad you made the time. At Emmanuel, we are building a community of deep belonging and wide invitation and welcome. You'll find worship beginning with the words in your bulletin. For those of you who don't know me, sorry, I'm Della Wells, I'm the rector. Good to see you. We begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. In this community, we say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day. O Lord, Lord make, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never to fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of a spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and a shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. 
And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the bag, baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before, and David heard him. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philist this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took a staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with a shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come out to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give you flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and stuck the Philistine in his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Sorry. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, <coughs> sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown, and yet we are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. May God's love continue to fill this space and peace be with you. Amen. Most of you know I have a 17-year-old high school junior at home. So English has been sort of at the forefront of our lives for the past nine months. And what I've learned in this process is that James Joyce novels give me a headache. <laughs> I appreciate the significance, but the stream of consciousness is a ride I do not need to voluntarily jump aboard. With this said, today's gospel unleashed a flow of thought in my mind that would have made Joyce jealous. At one point, I was considering multiple props for the homily. I contemplated giving Randy a call on Tuesday and asking if we could install a screen so we had some visuals going on. That didn't happen. I, I did go on a hunt for a very specific book, which I couldn't find. Weirdly enough, the hunt for that book brought with it another full chain of very weirdly connecting arches that just kept me going. So here we are, Sunday. Brace yourselves. There may be some turbulence on this ride, but bear with me. We will get to the point safely. I'd like to introduce you to my rock. I've had this rock with me since I was 18 years old. I was sitting on the beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and that rock got swept up onto the shore and into my hand somewhere around one in the morning. Now, I assigned a story to the rock. And by the way, I assign stories to many things. One of my favorites 
is when I found a hole in my right sock and I apologized to my left one for doing nothing offensive before I banished it to the cleaning rag pile. This rock's story was one of a giant underwater boulder. It had been beaten by the currents for centuries, managed to save itself from becoming sand, and with a little bit of faith, it finally made its way out of the deep water and into my hand. Its journey wasn't planned. It just was. And it simply had hope that it would find safety outside of the water one day. Why have I kept that rock? Can't really say. I do know it's been with me ever since that night. I don't carry it around like a security blanket. It just sits in a box. Every now and again, it comes out, and I think about the story that I gave it. Why that rock? Why that story? I can't say for sure, but the best answer that I could find lies in that book that I went on the hunt for this week. The book is called The Bible Story, and it's by Arthur Maxwell. I did find out that that book wasn't just a book. It's a series of books. Ten, as a matter of fact. What I've come to understand is that somewhere out there in the early 1970s, there was a book salesman who gave away volume one of a 10-volume set of children's illustrated Bible stories to every doctor, every dentist, every library, every bank, and every restaurant in Western North Carolina. That book was a constant in every waiting room that occupied my childhood. There were two illustrations in that book that I would turn to no matter where I was, and for at least two minutes, I would not be fidgety or bored to tears. The first illustration was of Abraham with his son tied to an altar about to be sacrificed. This picture was the equivalent of a horror movie to me. My mom told me, don't look at the boy who's tied up. Look at the light shining on the old man's face. What I wanted to tell her is that man with the light on his face, he's holding a knife. That story we covered a couple of weeks back. The next image in that book that captured me is much more relevant today. It was David and Goliath. My mom would smile when I would ask her about that picture. There was a very small boy. And that boy had a piece of cloth, and in that piece of cloth was a rock. To think that little rock and that little boy could take down that giant. That story. And by the way, I'm going to pause for a second. I have to say thank you to that really bad book salesman. Because no one ever bought volumes 2 through 10. But that aside, that story gave me push to grow. I loved then, and I still do today, 
the story of overcoming insurmountable odds. Speaking of, Mark's gospel. In Mark's gospel, Jesus silences a storm. The image it conjures is something akin to the opening scenes of Gilligan's Island. The castaways being tossed about in their tiny little ship. The difference is on this particular minnow, Jesus is asleep. The professor, Marianne, Ginger, Mr. and Mrs. Howell, and Gilligan all go wake him up. They are panicking, drenched, scared. And he wakes up and says in many fewer words, watch this. Watch what believing in my Father, your God, can do. It can calm the seas, protect you. You will not have to spend the next three seasons stranded on an island with a transistor radio. We learn, just like with David and Goliath, that belief has power. Now this brings me to a bumper sticker. I see this one frequently. It says, coexist. The word is written with spiritual context representing many different faiths. And I love that message a lot. What I struggle with is some of the mysticism stories, a few of the faiths represented in that bumper sticker bring with them. I find myself so caught up in that thought that I quickly lose sight of the message the bumper sticker represents. Coexist. Mark's story today and the strength David had facing Goliath, honestly, there's some mysticism in there. I say a few words and the seas will calm. I am a small boy capable of bringing down a giant. Now there's some Spider-Man energy in that one. When we ask someone to have faith, we are asking them to believe in something they cannot see and in feeling something that someone or some may even question its authenticity. This is asking a lot. My journey this week of story and thought brought with it chaos. The random thoughts, the movement of a mind that couldn't grasp onto something of focus, missed out on a basic concept important to both. The words Jesus actually said on that ship. Peace. Be still. In peace, we find strength. In peace, we tap into the magic within. In peace, we find ourselves and community. In peace, we can allow the power of God to guide us. In peace, we find strength. In peace, 
we find compassion and in peace. We find a rock on a beach and we have an epiphany. Amen. Standing as you are able, we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For bishops and all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us, pr let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which the Lord has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, especially for Dion, Ellie, Ash, Vanda, Brian, Liz, Rachel, Bobby, Annie, Deb R, Michael, Katie, Timmy, Charlie, Robert, Alan, Jason, and family, Kathleen, Maggie, Jane, Kay, Phil, Bruce, Jack, Nancy, and David, John, Fred, the election of the 28th presiding bishop, and a just and peaceful resolution to the wars in the Middle East and Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, 
and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For delivery from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, to be at sea is to love it and to respect God and God's creation. We ask that you hold in your care all of our sailors, fisher folk, and others out on the water, guiding them safely through your seas into safe ports at the end of the day. In the words of the old English fisherman's prayer, O oh God, thy sea is so great and my boat is so small. O oh God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for all people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, for all people of that land. Well, we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to the violence and the establishment of peace. We call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom where all people are treated with dignity and honor as your children, for to all of us, you are our heavenly Father that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the, communion, in the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, to you O Lord, Lord our God. As we begin the general convention in these next days to elect our 28th presiding bishop, we pray in the words of the president of the House of Deputies starting the convention. Lord, we find ourselves at a crossroads. The road behind us is long and winding. The road ahead is foggy and uncertain. But one thing is clear. We cannot go back to where we were. The world has changed and so have we. The only way forward is to keep walking together in love. We ask that you support us in those steps, O oh Lord. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Gathering our thoughts before we begin, we confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Peace, Toby. Good to see you. Welcome to everybody who's joined us, whether you've uh, come on other Sundays. If you are new today, please make yourselves known to us. Join us for coffee hour. Make sure we know who you are and how to stay in touch if you'd like that. We'd like that. Welcome to everybody who's joining us online. Hello, Phil. I think you may be there. Mom, I don't know. Mary Sydney, Randy. Hi. Randy is still at the Wells reunion in Atlanta. And, uh, and we're really glad that we have Caleb and Paige, or Caleb and Paige, of course, and then Susanna supporting us today in music. And it is a team effort, and with Allie as well. I mean, it just, thank you for pulling all of that together. I have just a few things I want to share. You will have noticed that 
uh, maybe you didn't see it. There are two condensers dropped down into the window well um, outside the chapel door, and there are two more in the um, nook beside the columbarium behind a bush. That will enable us to begin to have air conditioning service in the church before we have the variance, the zoning variance on South Baptist Street. So we will be up and running for the upcoming weddings and other events. Um, our parking trial is coming up with the city of Newport. This is a fantastic engagement we have with the city as a way to be part of that community and active in what the city is doing. What this means for you on Sunday mornings is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we have it locked out for public parking on Sunday mornings from 7 until noon. And then we have uh, purchased a number of, of signs that will show us we're going to have the fence wall parallel to Spring Street, um, the higher one, and then the fence wall parallel to Lee Street. Is Lee or what's right behind us? Holland. Right behind us, Holland. Holland Street, those will be Newport Classical and Emmanuel reserved spaces during the day between 7 before 5 p.m., right? And then the other wall on Thames Street will be reserved for our permit parkers during the day. In the evenings, it's all open, open for public parking. Now, we want this to be a raging success. Why do we want this to be a raging success? Because then the city of Newport will be provided with every incentive they need to continue this and to care for the lot and to patrol it. And they've got all sorts of great rolling stock, like big trucks that fix parking lots and stripe them and all that kind of thing. We don't have any of those things. So this is a wonderful way for us to engage with the community. If you have friends who wonder where to park in the evenings, to go to, I don't know, Chanterelle, O'Brien's is super fun with the kids and the dogs in the fountain, any of those places and want to know where they can park, they can have public parking at Emanuel now, in the, in the center spaces always and around the fence lines after 5 p.m. We'll turn up round a no public parking, no public parking at all, sign on July 3rd, three days into this, and keep it up through July 20th, which is Newport Classicals Festival because we have to have full control of the lot during those times for um, all of the vans and buses and artists and rehearsals and, and everything that's going on with the festival. So if anybody has any questions about that, please call. Your hang tags are not um, going to be active. I mean, that's not something the city will check for. They're hard to monitor. So just be sure when you're parking during the appropriate times, park in the Emanuel Newport classical spaces. There should be more than plenty for everybody who comes and goes. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
So as I, as I set the table, um, I want to share with you something that I, I didn't remember to say at announcements, and that is that um, on Saturday from 11 to 1, we have the Rainbow Rendezvous, Sounds of Pride. The, the Pride Parade will be coming by Emmanuel, and we're going to have wonderful music and, um, and people out on the lawn. So if you'd like to come, bring a chair, bring a picnic, please do be available for that. Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, and as it is less familiar to many of us, please do follow for the different responses. It is a time for us, an ordinary time, to hear the resonances of our community and of our relationship with God and our relationship with the natural earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, your sisters in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he us. By his wounds, we are And therefore we praise you, joining with the, vo the voices with heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> And so, Father, 
we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. with thanksgiving.
found in your bulletins or on page 365 of your Red Books of Common Prayer in the posture of reverence that is comfortable for you. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. That's me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.